Hi Safe Divers, so just very quickly, I've got this quick note. This is actually a re-upload of a previous video that I made on my twin setup. Uh, one of my commenters actually noticed that I had my regulators set up the wrong way round, uh, which was completely true, it was very accurate. Um, so as I was taught, it's always best to sort of own up to your mistakes and then uh, sort of correct them. So that's what I'm doing here. Most of the video is very much the same, except I have changed around uh, the section on the regulators to the correct format. Um, so yeah, here it is. Hi guys, welcome to Safe Diving. So in today's video, I'm gonna be taking a closer look at my twin set. Um, so when I first started diving and then I started sort of branching out, I kind of saw twin sets around and I always thought they were cool. When I was a kid, I always swore that I'd dive with two cylinders instead of one because why would you only dive with one? If you can have two, then you've got twice as much. And that kind of childish logic still kind of fits with modern day technical diving. Uh, a bit of redundancy goes a long, long way. So diving with two cylinders gives you plenty of redundancy. Uh, I just have just so much gas on my back. And, um, and yeah, I just find they're a lot safer. Um, but trying to get into it, they were a little bit confusing and I couldn't really find any information about it at the time. Um, so I thought I'd make this uh, this video. If you're thinking about sort of moving on to twins, um, basically this is how you assemble them um, onto like a BCD and a harness. Um, yeah, I just thought it would make your life a little bit easier, maybe you'll understand twins a little bit more, and then yeah, you might sort of think about moving into diving into twins if you had a closer look at someone's set. Um, so yeah, let's take a closer look at my twin set. Okay, so the obvious thing, uh, or the obvious first thing, is the tanks themselves. So these are a pair of steel 12 litre 232 bar cylinders, and, um, and yeah, these are my twins. So I went for twin 12s because they're just, they just kind of feel right for me. You can get, you can twin anything up really. Um, I used to dive on twin seven liters, which are about the same height, uh, but they're a lot skinnier, they're a lot lighter as well. Um, but they were 300 bar seven, so that I could get pretty much the same volume of gas, it's a little bit different. Um, but what I found is, is that the sevens, they were nice because they were nice and small, they were pretty easy to pick up. Um, when you sat down on like the rib of a boat, the bottom of the cylinders touch the bottom as well, so you haven't got the weights uh, sort of actually on your shoulders, you can take that weight off. Uh, but trying to get a true 300 bar air fill is quite tricky. Even if I did it myself, by the time that you hit the water, you're scraping about 260 bar. So um, I didn't really see that added benefit. So I opted for, uh, for twin 12s. Um, that way, if I'm diving with someone on just a single 12, I know I have twice as much gas as them. They're a decent length. Again, like with the sevens, um, they kind of rest. So, um, so if I do need to take the weight off my shoulders out of the water, I can literally sit down and they'll be sort of taking that weight off my shoulders. Um, and yeah, just, just plenty of gas for, for, for long, long dives. So breaking this down, um, the tanks themselves, these are exactly the same as single tanks. The only thing that differs is the, uh, is the valves at the top and, uh, and these two bands. So starting up at the top, the, um, the valves that are put in, they're pretty much the same as your, um, as your standard tank valve. The only thing that changes is that these are mirror images of one another. You have a left and a right-handed valve and they're connected in the middle by, what's, uh, by what we call a manifold. So, um, so that means that I can switch either of these tanks on and, uh, and that will deliver gas to my regulators. Um, but then when this valve is open, it means that I'm breathing from both tanks together. So, um, so as I go down, the, the pressure sort of drops in both of them. But in an emergency, if something goes wrong with one of them, 
I can close that valve. Um, this one's actually open all the way, which is unusual. Um, I can close that valve and then just breathe from one side. So that way I can switch that off. I can still be breathing from that. So I have an independent air source. Doesn't mean that you need two separate first stages, but that's a good thing. Again, you've got more redundancy. But, um, but yeah, having a manifolded twin set just means that you don't have to switch between the two constantly. You're actually breathing from both of them together. And uh, if you need to, you can isolate it in an emergency. Now, the twinning bands. So these go as high up as they can on the shoulder. Uh, the first one goes quite high. And then what these basically do is they hold these two cylinders parallel so they don't twist. Because these are very, very heavy, if one of them moves and the other one doesn't, you're going to damage these threads. And these are very, very important to keep nice and safe. Um, if they bend, there's going to be a very loud noise and um, a very expensive bill, let's put it that way. So you have these, uh, these twinning bands and these are bolted on. These hold them very, very securely and stop them from moving around so they move as one unit. They also act as a way of attaching your tanks onto your back plate and harness um, so that it's really, really rigid and you don't need like cam bands to, um, to attach them onto them. Now the second one is lower down and this one is always 11 inches away from the top one. And, um, and that basically comes from the back plates, uh, the way that we've uh, sort of designed back plates throughout the years. Um, the story that I heard, I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, I'm running with it, um, is that back plates used to be made out of old road signs um, and they were 13 inches long and then they just went, hey, why don't we make it one inch in from each end? And that's kind of the uh, the universal size that we'll go with. Uh, so yeah, every tank band is fitted about 11 inches apart from one another. I don't know if that's true. That's the story that I've heard. That's the one that I tell my students. Um, so yeah, so that's it. Other than that, I don't have boots on my tanks. Um, that's just extra clutter. And, um, and it means that it's covering up the bottom so that I can't see any sort of rust or damage. Um, when they're exposed, yes, they do get scuffed up, but at least I can see it. And if it looks dangerous, then I can um, sort of take care of it. Whereas with a boot, it just holds water against the bottom of it. And um, yeah, sort of rust can get them underneath the enamel paint. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a good thing. But, um, but yeah, so those are my cylinders. Um, let's start building up my complete twin set with my BCD and everything. Next up, I have my P weight. Um, so this is a little extra trim weight. Uh, this uh, weighs about five kilograms um, because despite how heavy these are, these are like 20 something kilos each. I still need some lead to actually help me get down with my dry suit and my undersuit. Um, so an extra five kilos of lead uh, sort of helps me. And this is a, a basically a big block of lead. It's coated, um, so it means that, that lead isn't leaching out into the water. Um, that's quite bad for the environment. So always try to get uh, sort of coated lead if you can. And the way it's shaped, it's shaped a bit like a wedge. So it just sits in here and um, fits in between my tanks. So it sits in there and um, it's, you can see we've got these rails and these are um, sort of holding, or the, um, the bolts are holding that weight in the position. And, um, and yeah, it's out of the way. It's nice and close to my body as well. The further away you put that lead, the more it wants to kind of twist you around. But with it uh, sort of like this, it's nice and close, it's nice and trim. And, um, and yeah, it's just some wasted space. So yeah, why not fit some lead there? My wing goes on next. Uh, this is the buoyancy part of my um, of my backplane and harness system. Um, this is a Morris XR. Uh, I can't remember what they call it, but it's like a it's a twenty pound um, or is it twenty kilo, forty four pound wing. Um, so plenty of lift. The way you can tell this is for, for twin sets is that it's nice and wide. We've got a wide section in the middle and then the lobes around. I dive with a donut si uh, shaped wing. You can get um, sort of horseshoe sized ones or shaped ones which have a cut out in the middle, uh, but they're a bit old fashioned nowadays. Um, donuts sort of allow plenty of um, sort of air movement all the way around. And um, I basically went for this one mainly for the um, sort of external um, 
and internal properties. Basically on the outside you have this external shell and this is protecting the, uh, the bladder on the inside from the abrasions um, but on the inside as well the bladder itself is pretty tough so um, yeah I think I ended up sort of going for this one but um, there are plenty of good ones. I've actually got my eye on a new wing as we speak. Um, I just got to wait for it to uh, to be released. But um, but yeah, this this one's fine. It uh, it definitely does the job. And you'll notice down the centre we have these uh, these sort of grommet holes, and these are funnily enough. 11 inches apart from one another. So um, so they're going to line up with the uh, with the bolts underneath. So um, so yeah, when you're building this uh, sort of on the dive site tank first and then the um, that P weight and then you line up these um, these grommets onto the um, onto the bolt holes and um, and that's basically it. Now all we need to do is put our back plate on top of that, screw that all down, clamp it together and you're ready to rock and roll. So um, so yeah that's that's my bladder. Uh, let's take a look at my back plate and harness. Okay, and then you fit my back plate on. So my back plate is a stainless steel back plate. Uh, this is about three mil thick. Um, so steel is great because it's strong um, and it adds a little bit of weight. As you can see, this one is actually a skeletonized one. Um, so it's a little bit lighter, but um, if you, if you need sort of tr extra trim weight, that's somewhere where you can add some weight to your uh, your BCD. Um, I've already lined it up on the uh, just your bolt holes, so these are 11 inches apart again. And um, to fix it all together, a pair of wing nuts, um, and they just kind of screw on. Now, um, the first time I saw wing nuts on a back plate, I thought, how does that not just dig into your back and uh, sort of be really uncomfortable? But um, trust me, they they don't. Um, one thing is, is that this, a lot of this, you can use this as buoyancy obviously, so that's kind of lifting you up, so that kind of hangs you away from it. And two, you've got your dry suit, you've got your undersuit and everything underneath it, um, that's extra padding so it never reaches you. And three, it sits in a real um, sort of divot, so, um, so it's quite hard for your back to actually reach that at all. Um, you've got a good sort of half inch of depth just in that sort of spinal section there, so you find they, uh, they don't touch. So on my back plate, plenty of attachment points if I want to um, sort of attach any um, any loops on that. Um, if I, for whatever reason, some divers they like to attach some uh, sort of bungees there for a, um, a DSMB so they can stir it away. Um, you can also attach um, sort of cam bands on the other side if you want to dive with a, uh, a small um, uh, sort of dry suit tank you can just have a small like one liter pony um, just sort of in there it's out of the way but that's an independent air source so you don't have to waste your, your actual breathing gas on inflating your dry suit um, so that's what these kind of holes around there are for. My harness is just a single piece um, of uh, two inch webbing um, so this is DIR style, it kind of starts as a, um, as a waistband, comes around, becomes my shoulder straps, goes underneath through the back plate, becomes my other shoulder strap and then comes the rest of my uh, sort of waistband. Very strong, very um, reliable. The, um, the downside is, is that it's very inflexible, there's no sort of adjustment in that strap. So what I did is I fitted a, um, an Agia Harper loop. So this is a very simple little device that um, just kind of slots through your um, your back plate and then you thread your um, your left or you can sort of get two so you can thread both of your shoulder straps through that and then that way what you can do is at the beginning of the dive you can really lengthen it off, get into it and then when you're doing yourself up you pull that down and that sort of tightens that strap and, uh, and then the waistband becomes the right length. So that's a way of not breaking the loop but making it a little bit adjustable. I've got some um, neoprene sleeves over the top uh, that just helps prevent that from rubbing my dry suit and damaging that. Um, over my shoulders pre-bent um, D-ring so I can clip things off onto that. Underneath that I've got a whole bunch of these uh, sort of inner tube um, sections and that's for your torches or any accessory that you're not going to be using but you take down with you. Stops it from flapping around. Um, this loop is for my inflator, so that would go through there next. Um, that just stops that from drifting away, um, so I always know exactly where it is over my shoulder. <coughs> 
pretty much exactly the same on my um, on my right hand shoulder. This is my sort of primary D ring that I clip things off onto. Uh, I've got another section of that um, sort of bungee just in case I need to tidy something up. Down to the waistbands, again, very reminiscent of a um, of a waist belt. Uh, sorry, a weight belt. Um, quick release. But what I have done is I modified the end of that just to make it a little bit easier for myself. A completely flat edge is kind of tricky to um, sort of thread through sometimes. So I just cut that corner off, melted it down, made sure it's uh, sort of nice and neat so um, so that doesn't fray. And that's much, much easier to um, sort of get through uh, even with gloved hands. <coughs> Now I don't have a D-ring on my um, sort of right hand side, on my waist, but I do on my left. So this is for my, uh, my SPG, my pressure gauge, um, just a big straight um, sort of D-ring off on that. And then I can clip whatever I want from stages off onto that. Crotch strap, very essential, sort of holds you in position, stops it from sort of riding up and uh, sort of going anywhere. Uh, much softer material because it's going between your legs. Got a D-ring on the front, that's for a, a DPV if I, um, I'm not using it, I tend to tuck it away. Uh, and then just above my butt, um, I have this other one, which is a pre-bent D-ring, just to clip things off onto. That's handy for spools, just to keep them out of the way. Uh, but that's it, that's basically how you build up the different layers of a uh, sort of backplate and harness. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my side mount regulators, not my side mount, my twin set regulators, and uh, show you the configuration and um, sort of what hose goes where on my uh, on my regulators when I'm diving twin sets. Okay, so now onto the regulators. So this is the bit that I had to refilm because someone noticed a uh, mistake, and um, yeah, it was a very good spot. So yeah, um, basically what I'd done is I. Uh, I was filming back to back and I changed from my single hose setup to my twin hose setup uh, without swapping the hoses over correctly and I effectively had my primary on my left hand um, valve and the reason why it's important not to uh, sort of have it in that configuration is that if you're swimming in an overhead environment that, um, that valve wheel, if that sort of rolls on something, it's gonna roll into a closed position and um, you never want your, uh, your primary to be um, sort of in that kind of closed, um, closed position for emergencies. So yes, it comes off of the right hand post, but I'll get into the uh, specifics later. On the right hand post, because, they're, um, because the screw threads are opposite, uh, if you're in an overhead environment and you do sort of brush against the, uh, the ceiling, then it's just gonna open that valve so there's nothing wrong with that. So getting into specifics on my right hand uh, cylinder that comes over my right hand shoulder. Um, I have one high pressure hose so this is a, a short little sort of six inch 15 centimeter hose. Um, this is actually wrapped in a section of neoprene just to give it a bit of extra room protection and that leads to a wireless air transmitter that talks to my dive computer. So the reason why I put it on a short little hose is that uh, sort of this is a very expensive, very clever piece of kit and if that's attached directly onto the first stage, if that gets knocked or bumped, then it's very easy to damage it. Whereas when it's on a uh, short sort of six inch long hose, it's got that kind of movement, it can get sort of bashed around, it can move around and it's not going to uh, sort of get damaged. As far as low pressure hoses, um, my short one that comes straight out of the, uh, the first stage, this leads to my inflator for my BCD so that I can control my buoyancy. Um, and yeah, that's just a uh, sort of independent um, sort of buoyancy control. Um, and then as far as airways, I have my long sort of 2.1 meter long hose. And this routes down the sides um, sort of on in my sort of right hand side underneath the um, the actual waistband it gets tucked underneath my little knife on the, on that side it then comes up my front around behind my neck and then it comes to this second stage so this has a uh, little bolt snap attached to it just so I can clip it off I usually have fitted a 90 degree elbow just so that when it's fitted around behind my neck and then goes into my mouth that hose just roots in a bit neater uh, so I don't have this big loop kind of around the side of my neck uh, and then that just goes into my primary second stage 
So it's on a really, really long hose just so that I can donate in an emergency. And uh, if I do need to donate, they've got plenty of space to, uh, to move around and sort themselves out in, even if you're swimming single file. Um, so that's my right hand post. Onto my left hand. Um, so high pressure comes down my left hand side and that gets clipped off onto um, that waist D-ring on the waistband. And then this is uh, just a standard rubber high pressure uh, hose and that leads to a, um, a brass with a glass face pressure gauge. Very simple, very easy to see. Um, no boots so it doesn't hide any corrosion or anything. And, uh, and that's clipped off onto a large eyed uh, bolt snap so that I can uh, sort of clip that off really quick and easily. Flow pressure, um, I've got two. The first one is an inflator, so this goes to my, um, uh, my dry suit. Again, that routes down my left hand side, much like my primary regulator does on the, uh, on the right. But, um, but this leads to a quick disconnect low pressure inflator hose that connects to the chest valve on my dry suit. Again, I can use this for buoyancy, but it's primarily for uh, just sort of adding uh, sort of air to the dry suit to really squeeze and to add a bit of uh, sort of thermal insulation. But, um, but yeah, I can use that as a buoyancy device if I need to. Regulators, my alternate, my sort of octo as such, um, but this is the one that I'm switching to in a uh, in an emergency. This comes straight out of my left hand post this time, um, and then on a short little hose to a second stage with a necklace around it, so that just sits right in front of my chest, so that if I need to donate that long hose primary, I can just switch to that one really quick and easily um, and that's it that's the uh, the regulator setup so it's nice and safe you've got redundancy so you've got something that you can breathe from on both you've got something that you can control your buoyancy from on both so that if you ever need to switch one valve off and isolate it in the middle you can still breathe and you can still control your buoyancy on either side you just have to change a um, change the second stage Okay guys, so this is my twin set. Um, of course, let me know down in the comments below if you're just thinking about moving on to twins. If you've got any questions at all, just pop them down and I'll, uh, I'll make sure that I answer them, uh, either by um, sort of writing to you or actually, if there are enough questions about twin sets, I'll do a completely separate sort of Q&A style video, just answering your questions and trying to sort of put you at ease um, on whether you're thinking about moving on to twins. Um, but yeah, let me know. Do you dive singles or do you dive twins? Are you thinking more about side mounts? Um, I have done dive side mount but um, for sort of local diving I prefer twins I just like how sort of solid they are and, um, and in cold water dealing with all those little bolt snaps can be a, a bit of a, a sort of a kerfuffle a bit of a pain so um, so I just tend to dive my twins I know exactly um, sort of how they um, how they work and how they sit um, but yeah let me know down in the comments below what you're thinking about moving on to uh, whether this helped you out with your decision on whether to uh, sort of move to twins or whether this just seems too much for you um, you just want to stick with singles pop it down in the uh, the comments below and we'll have a good old discussion um, as ever if you want me to record anything else let me know in the comments below uh, if you enjoyed this don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe as well because that's really going to help me out thank you for watching make sure you're staying safe during this lockdown and keeping your family nice fit and healthy uh, make sure to look after your heart because that's one of the main reasons for uh, diver incidents uh, during recent years so this lockdown isn't going to be doing us any good um, so yeah make sure you're looking after yourself uh, don't forget to check out all of my other videos thank you for watching and of course safe diving. Okay so thank you very much for watching this video on my channel I upload videos every single week all about how to become a better scuba diver. Now I've been working in and around the diving industry for a very long time now and I have a lot of advice that I can help you out with. So if you need any help or advice with anything to do with scuba diving just let me know in the comments below and subscribe to my channel because I'll probably make a video all about it to help you out. So you can click here to check out one of my latest how-to videos to upgrade your equipment and your diving and click here to check out one of my scuba diving advice videos. Thank you for watching and of course safe diving.